Well, how do there, chums? Design Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm going to be having a lovely cup of tea with you guys out there in the viewerverse and talking about No Man's Sky. But what have I got to talk about? There's no real news because we've only just had an update. So what am I going to be talking about? It's about some ideas, people, to improve the end game loop. Shall we jump over to the tinter webs, people in the viewerverse? Let's do that, Nyak, yes? So, boom, here we are over on my community tab. On YouTube. Now, I do like to use my community tab on YouTube. I use this more so than Twitter. It used to be the other way around, but, you know, X and all that lot. But anyhow, here we go. What would you consider as end game content for No Man's Sky if it was added in an update? Okay. Got an idea I haven't listed. Add a comment. So these are my top things that I would like to see. So one of the things I'd like to see is planets with mega large fauna that are aggressive. So you know like when you scan a planet now and it says it's got aggressive sentinels. I'd like it to come up with it has aggressive fauna. Now that could be, you know, those giant worms that we've got that jump now out, out of the ground that you can't attack. Well, I'd like it that we could attack them, but not only them as attack them, them attack us, you know, and, and maybe even enders you know a little bit like tornadoes do currently or meteorites or lightning it'd be nice to have aggressive fauna that can you know take you out but not only like giant worms but proper t-rexy type creatures or even aggressive diplos it could be anything or even those rhinos that we saw in the e3 trailers that smashed down trees i want to see large aggressive fauna and if you do take out that large aggressive fauna it'd be nice if you could actually keep maybe the skull or its horns or its tusks or its teeth or claws or something and adorn it on your base as some sort of trophy considering that the players can gallivant the universe as a viking it'd be nice if we could do this sort of like space safari as a little mini side hunt or jaunt you know and take out aggressive fauna it'd be nice if we could adorn those things to our multi-tools or staffs i know that we can actually build out staffs now but it'd be cool if you could make your own sort of alien multi-tool and put tusks and teeth on it from creatures that you've downed perhaps that are aggressive you know That'd be pretty darn sweet. I also feel that the deeper oceans needs to have large megafauna in there. You just don't get that sense of a trepidation. I think you should have that sense of a trepidation of landing on an alien planet that you might get eaten by its wildlife. I, I, I kind of do. Yes, I even think some of the flora should be enhanced. Maybe have grappling vines that grab you and pull you in. You have to sort of wiggle your joystick to escape or something, or else you're going to die. You know, that sort of stuff. I just think some of these planets, they need to feel a bit more hostile, not only from weather, but from what lives there. You know, what's actually evolved there needs to have that sense of scariness. Or at least in trepidation. Putting your foot on an alien world doesn't feel too alien if there's no threat there. Okay, right, so next I'll put the Void Realm. You could do daily, weekly raids and go in it for loot, you know? So the Void, I think, sits behind the Realm of Glass where the Void Mother resides. I almost see the Void Mother and the Autophages as some kind of firewall, like a medley of Sentinels and Corvax, hybridity, if you like, that protects us from the Void. And I think the Void, as it creeps into our realm, is causing these abandoned buildings where you see all the organic stuff, where you see the derelict freighters. It's very different to what you see when you think of the Void Mother or the Autophages. It's organic, it's pustule, it's, it's mutated. And I think the Void Mother's stopping that from coming in, but it is encroaching, hence why we're seeing infested planets, why we're seeing worms. It's all part of a virus, worm virus, you know? So I think it would be nice if we could jump into that Void Realm, this organic pustule realm, maybe a zapping pustules, zapping or mutants, pow, 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 take that, take that. Maybe there's giant boss creatures in there and stuff. Big creatures with pustules all over them. You take out the pustules and you shoot the head off or something. I don't know. It could be really good fun, you know? I mean, something's laying these freaking mutant eggs at the abandoned stations, but we never get to see the giant monster that's been laying those eggs. They're freaking the size of our heads. And the babies are about the size of us. So how big is going to be the mother, you know? But we don't see it. So I think going into the void and taking out giant boss creatures... And if you do get loot, maybe now that we've got this ship customization coming, maybe they could give us some bespoke parts for our ship that like a hybrid of organic material like the living ships, but also part, you know, metal like our own ships, but then also have the extremes of both. So you have metal ships there 
and also void ship parts because maybe there's other people that have been going into the void all through time you know through portals or boundary failures or through black holes and maybe there's ships of yesteryear ancient ship technologies in there that we can sort of like pick up thanks james cooper for subscribing so yeah maybe we can bring back some of this ancient tech like new wing pieces or new engines that are not canon to game so we can actually build hybrid type fighters haulers and <clears throat> and explorers i mean that's all we've got at the moment hopefully they're going to open that up to shuttles and wing ships and all sorts of other stuff but they could do it with the staffs as well because we've now got the ability to build our own staffs maybe they could put this modular building mechanic into multi-tools as well and boom hey presto you've got a whole load of new loot to gain there at end game content once you're ready to go into the void and you know the void exists you know we may be signing on to the Atlantid or following the Atlas. It's going to open up how you can do those raids and maybe affect what you bring back loot-wise. You know, that could be quite cool. So hopefully they can bring all that in. That'd be freaking lovely. Heck yes. Return dead systems to space back to work in state like in the Utopia expedition. So in the Utopia expedition, we actually started in an abandoned system. We had to catalogue a load of planets to the point where we could then chart that planet and bring the actual station back into work in order. If you went back to that Utopia abandoned system after the expedition ended, it had a normal space station and you had to work with the, um, the colossal archives and uploading your data to the station and back forwards and forwards. And now we've got these new stations that would really make sense to be doing that and maybe returning dead systems back to a utopia-like state because these dead systems, they're all abandoned. They've got all that pustule stuff all over it. So maybe they could incorporate this idea with the, the idea above with doing the void raids to actually bring it back to state. So maybe you've got to destroy the void from behind the actual abandoned system and then chart all the actual planets and then encourage the actual life forms to come back and rebuild the station. I think that'll work freaking lovely. Those two in tandem would work really well. Then we've got the reduced galaxy count. So at the moment we've got 255 or 256 systems, however you want to count it, because Euclid is zero. Yeah, I don't want to get into that argument. But there's 256 systems, basically, depending on how you count it. But anyways, reduced galaxy count, I think they should reduce it down to 16. And I think they should make each system relatable to the glyph. So if you put in all of the actual glyphs of say the diplo you're going to go to the diplo dimension and inside of there the chances of encountering megafauna is a lot higher if say you put in i don't know the boat uh, glyph all the way through perhaps you're going to get the deeper oceans you know the deeper oceans more water type planets that sort of thing going on you know so hopefully they could tie those in and make it so it randomly generates as universes with a lot more variants and a lot more sort of i don't know know how uh, it's like after you've managed to go through all 16 maybe there's a 17th hidden galaxy that you go to that is random on every jump every jump you do it's a random part of the previous galaxies and it really varies it up so that would mean that everybody would want to travel through all 16 galaxies to get to that last galaxy and everybody would stop just sitting in euclid forever you know that that could really encourage going through all the universes and seeing everything now, I did put in the option here of want to see poll results. And I've also put in, you know, if you've got an idea of your own, add a comment. We're now going to hit up the comments, people. Now, for this one, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, sorry, I knocked the mic there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to scroll on down and we're going to take a read of each of these. Before we do, I'm just going to have a little sip of my lovely Captain Steve's brew, which, yes, I've got my own brew of tea, people in the viewerverse. It's freaking lovely. Um, yeah, you can find details on my About page on YouTube. But anyway, I'll put something on the screen now that you can see where I got it from, because it's lovely. OK, right. So we've got popular aggression, populated planets with actual cities. Heck yes, that'll be pretty darn freaking cool. The only trouble with that, though, popular aggression, is at the moment the Nintendo Switch struggles with settlements. I don't know how it would cope with cities. If they did implement cities, I think the only way they could really do it is maybe restrict base building in that system or something, or make it so there's only a couple of planets with these cities on them. Uh, there's ways and means. I'm sure they can do it. If they could optimise these space stations to work on Switch, and surely, yeah, you'd think they could do it with a city of some kind, wouldn't you? 
So yeah, maybe it could happen. Maybe it could happen. Now, Hello Games did put in these um, space aerial things that brought in the living Leviathan. And the Leviathan actually asked three really weird things. It asked, would you like to see planets with megafauna on? My idea there. Or with cities, your idea, popular regression. Or would you like to see ionised, idiom-veined mountains? So maybe planets with better resource gathering. I honestly thought Hello Games put those three options on that living Leviathan as questions to the actual community to see what we would vote for as to something that they'd roll out this year, perhaps. Now, maybe it's something that's being worked on already, popular aggression, I guess. Okay, Xenomorph. Honestly, love all these ideas. Well, thank you, Xenomorph. I really like your freaking little icon. It's that dude, isn't it, from out of Star Wars with the four arms. Is General Grievous? Very cool. Okay, we've got Chuckles, 9767. As someone who plays for ex exploration and building, more reasons to explore. Better planet variety, better planets, animals, landscapes, and more anomalies. Okay, more building. I want my Borg cube... And Stargate Atlantis, not the ground-based one, the dodgy orbital one, like an actual one. Or actual orbital stations. It's a small moon, Captain. That's not a moon, it's a space station. <laughs> yeah. Outside of that, I'm not I'm not in multiplayer. This may exist, but I haven't seen it. But how about actual in-game player-made quests, e.g. what Jason Ed will do with their challenges, runs, and some ways for players to input that game? Chuckles, that I did an ideas video on that just a little while ago. It's probably in my back catalogue of ideas somewhere. But yeah, I said it'd be very nice if we could actually make our own custom expeditions. And in the same way that we can share bite beats right now, it's, it's a shame we can't share that custom expedition with another player. They can hit up that new terminal inside of the Nexus, load it into there, and it comes up and says, Well, what do you want to take on this expedition? Yeah, or challenge even, like a speedrun challenge. It'd be nice if there was a timer that they could add as well or something. You know, yeah, that would be cool. If they can hand more ownership over to the actual player base and get us making player-driven content, I think that could add proper longevity into No Man's Sky. Chuckles, you're on to something. Let's just hope Hello Games are listening. Cool. JC the Survivor. IDK. Man's Sky. I don't know, Man's Sky. Oh, okay. Yeah, so many thoughts. Holy fudge, people. Look at all this we've got here. This is a massive freaking repository of ideas, people. Okay, right. Okay, this is this is a fun one. Here we go. Basically all of the above. Nice one. Thank you, JC. For me, it's all about the players being able to play how they want and express those ideas to the fullest. Okay, right. I'm going to have a little sip of my tea while I skim read this. I suggest you skim read as well at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so he's talking about terraforming planets and all that sort of stuff and the realm of glass. Yeah, so he's sort of echoing the same notes as me anyway here, people. Yeah, controlling factions and defend it. Yeah, a little bit like um, that new game that's come out, Helldivers 2, where you can see the encroachment of the bugs or the robots. Well, they could do similar with No Man's Sky, with the outer fringes of each of the 16 galaxies, if they reduced it to 16. And you could see the Void creep, or you could see the Sentinel creep. And either way, we could be pushing that back, a bit like Helldivers 2. That could work. I but then, you know, they'll be changing the game's mechanics to being more combat focused. But you don't have to go full on hell divers. It could just be that a load of players have to warp their freighters into those systems. And, you know, you've got all your freighters there and just leaving your freighters there or building a couple of bases there with defense turrets or something, depending on how many people take residence there, it could cause a defensive barrier. It's kind of why I put my hub in the 905, because I was thinking it'd be nice if they introduced a mechanic a little bit like what's in hell divers 2 into no man's sky before hell divers 2 was ever even conceptualized. Yeah, but anyway, 
With dungeons everywhere, base planets, asteroids, freighters, tombs, etc. Yeah, a little bit like how they generate the derelict freighters. Why not do that on planets with bunkers and things? Old derelict sentinel bunkers or pirate establishments or bases. That, yeah, really like that idea as well. It'd be cool if we could actually capture bounties and bring them back to us for extra sort of like loot gain. Yeah, so space jails, bounty hunters, outlaws. There's so much that could be done. The potential for this is freaking phenomenal. It just feels that everything that is put in by Hello Games, it feels it's like it's got potential for more bottoming out, for more depth. But you're going to always find that in, in a procedurally generated universe. The potential is freaking phenomenal, isn't it? And that's why I love No Man's Sky so much. Every single update, Hello Games chips away at a little bit more of that potential, a little bit more of that potential. Imagine if Hello Games had the actual manpower, or headcount, I should say, not manpower, because women have power too this day and age. <laughs> of course they do, they always have. But uh, you know what I'm saying? If they had the headcount of a AAA team, they were all like Hello Games employees currently, that have all got that mindset of this is a labour of love. If they just had a bigger headcount to tune into this and do more with it it could be it could be such an amazing game it, oh i mean it's already an amazing game but you know what i mean we could actually deliver in more of this potential and some of these ideas some of these ideas are amazing but perhaps they're too grand for a small team is what i'm getting at okay right two and four would make for the best end game content because we should be seeing something related to the void mother this year part four of the arg and the other one is areas of the games that have not been touched since the game launched. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's so much depth that needs to be added into pretty much every element of the game. It'd be nice if Hello Games just went over and redone stuff, rebalanced things. It's like learning the words now. It's like watching paint dry because there's so many of them. Knowledge stones still only give you one word per knowledge stone. You know, it, there needs to be ways to learn batches of 10 or something. When you go to a relic site or something like that and you hit up a, a plaque or something or a monolith plaque, one of the smaller ones, you should learn like 10 words there or something. Or maybe knowledge stones should at least teach you three words per stone. And then when you go to one of those you know, monoliths, at least there's three knowledge stones there. You're going to learn nine and then maybe you learn an additional one once you solve the puzzle. That'll give you 10. There just needs to be ways to speed stuff up and make things more fun and make things more progressive because yeah have you ever tried unlocking every single base part inside of the freaking nexus come on give us a button at the top of the page unlock full page yeah that might be nice the simple things like this it's just some things inside of no man's sky definitely need a rebalance because they've grown they've grown since conception and now that they're a big freaking beast it's a beast trying to unlock it or trying to actually progress through it. It's like wading through freaking taffy. It really is. It's not great. Hello, games. Make things more fun that have grown, basically. I voted for Void Rays, but I'd also like to restore systems or take over an abandoned station. 100% there, Macal. Yeah, I thought those four options would tantalise the taste buds and the people would say, I want it all. Yeah, I want it all too. Yeah. <laughs> Mandalorian studs. Being able to go to the solar system and land on planets like Earth and Mars and orbits also, also being able to build bases on them or finding cities. Ah, that sounds a bit like Starfield in No Man's Sky. I kind of like the fact that there isn't known systems inside of No Man's Sky. Or I should have people just pointing out problems with it. Oh, Mars is slightly the wrong hue. Yeah, it, it, it would get weird, you know. Austin Airco, procedurally generated void rail 255 times for each galaxy. That's progressively harder the further you go out. And there's a mechanic that keeps pulling you further out. Galaxy 256, the ultimate big boss realm. This would change the game forever by making full use of the whole game. Lex level, go big or go home. You're at the Void Mama. Hey, yes, Austin Airco. I think they should reduce it down to my, like 16 systems and then have a, a, a 17th galaxy that's really varied, like I was mentioning early, earlier. I actually done a whole video on the 16 galaxies idea. It's quite a long time ago. I, I find it. I dig it out. I put it up there. Give that a watch because I think that's how it could freaking work and work well. 
But yeah, it'd be nice if those 16 or 17 galaxies had their alternate dimensions, which is the void versions, where it's all infested, it's all virus -acated. We can dive in there, we can slowly push the void out and maybe uncover like a sub galaxy but maybe it's back in time like ancient times like a different time zone it's like some of these travelers that you encounter inside the stations they've got their own travelers law they talk about multi swords and they talk about their realm having a king and a queen it'd be nice if we after we've actually destroyed the void in each of the realms maybe we can see the travelers there using their multi swords maybe we can actually get multi swords you know add the travelers law into that realm you know, and what we're seeing inside of the stations are echoes of that sub realm. I'd love some terraforming on dead planets. I know there's a planet crafter for that, but still, a girl can dream. Oh, okay, enough now. I didn't know you was a lady of the varieties. Heck no. But yes, yes, yeah, that is a good dream to have. And I, I kind of agree with you. Terraforming would be lovely, especially since some of these moons that we visit actually says terraforming catastrophe. So you know that terraforming was a thing. Where's it gone? It'd be nice to have that back. 100% agree. I did a video on terraforming as an idea. And once you've actually terraformed and brought life back to a system, a little bit like Utopia, you can actually auction off that system to either Gek, Corvax or Viking. Depending on what you found on that system, they'd have different interests and they'd offer you different things. Like the, the, the um, Corvax will offer you nanites. The Viking might offer you Quicksilver, whereas the Gek will offer you shed loads of units. That video... I can't remember what the title is. If I can find it, I'll put a link up there. Otherwise, I, I, I think it's a station ownership one. I'll put it up there if I find it. Anyway, cool, yeah. Okay, we've got Vandarian. I would like some solid lore with tangible, meaningful people and places. Gek, Viking, Corvax, Homewells and Territories, leaders and factions and warfare, even if it's not the three factions fighting each other, but the three banding together against a common enemy. Right now, outside of the Nexus, it really feels kind of lifeless and hollow, like the MPs walk around and stuff, but where do they come from? Do they have lives, families? The world needs to feel lived in. That's how I feel about settlements, 100% how I feel about settlements. You're an overseer, but you've got no kinship with these people. They just roam around moaning about stuff, and you can't change the fact that they're upset or depressed about something. I wish they offered you missions. I wish there was a way to bring up that sort of level with them. And I wish you did get that family sort of feel when you go to your settlement. But, you know, that doesn't really help Switch players much since they haven't got settlements, does it? So, yeah, maybe if they could echo that out, maybe at Colossal Archives or maybe inside the stations, 100% agree with you. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Okay, one of the nine. How about the Void or Void Planet Types with Boss or Dungeon Types area events so you don't have to participate in battle? If you want, you can continue to explore. Yeah, well... I was thinking if you do go into the realm of glass or through the realm of glass and into the void, perhaps you get 16 minutes in there or you get 16 minutes, 16 minutes and 16 minutes and you can combine them together for your raid. You know, like how you run Quicksilver missions at the moment, you can have up to three pidgets similar to that. But you can have 16 minutes in the actually in the void realm and you go there with a group of mates or on your own, take out a boss or just scavenge stuff. Just go and hunt for loot on the planets. Yeah, 100%. That's kind of how I envisage the idea in my head. You can do whatever you want when you go in there. Those 16 minutes are yours to do what you like with. You can hit up a mission, a set mission, a proper raid to take out a boss. Or you can just go in there almost like a patrol mission in Destiny and just go down to a planet and start harvesting stuff. Bring it back and see what you get after you clean all the crap off. Maybe you take it to that autophage that we built on the actual Nexus, you know, man spider. All this stuff that you brought back covered in pus. He cleans it up and says, oh, look, you've got a new cape. Oh, look, you've got a new ship part and it's an ancient one. It's like a tri-wing, you know, something like that. You know, that'd be pretty darn freaking awesome. That'd be lovely. How yes, it would. Especially now we've got all this customization for ships in there. It makes 100% freaking legit sense to me. Oh, okay, yeah, we've got D Anderson. And Hello Games can keep just putting more stuff into the void then, can't they? You know, like how they add new Quicksilver items. Just add new void items. <laughs> Done. Okay, a three-way battle for control of every system. And then every galaxy with read time updates on the races, gains and losses. A little bit like Helldivers, yes, but with the actual races. 
there's now peace in the actual system. So I think if you are to do this, maybe put it on the outer edges of the actual universes. Each of the galaxies have this sort of PvP areas. I agree with you. That, that could be quite cool. That could be quite awesome. That really could. And the further you get to the centre, the more peaceful things get, you know? Yeah, that makes sense as to why we're heading to the centre. Still can't wait for Xbox update to drop because the next expedition will not start on all platforms to acquire the update. Yeah, PS and PC players saying, suck it, Xbox. Really needs to zip it. Yeah, because you won't get expeditions until the Xbox gets the update. So really everyone will still suffer from this. To be honest, Darkstar, I 100% feel that Xbox should have got the update when everybody else got it. Um, I don't overly agree with some of the things that Xbox has been doing with Game Pass and things for the last few years or buying up studios and all that sort of shenanigans. And what happened with Starfield was a little bit shite. I know that might actually get rectified and it might come to all different platforms. But I don't really like monopolization on anything. And the fact that Xbox players didn't get this update at the same time as everybody else is still a massive swathe of my community that can't actually enjoy the update that if they do watch any of my videos are going to get spoilers. You know, I, I honestly don't think anyone should be saying, suck it, Xbox. But I don't overly like Microsoft. I don't like Microsoft. I don't mind Xbox. I've got an Xbox. I've got an Xbox. I play Powell on my Xbox and Starfield on my Xbox. And I still do play both of those games in the background from time to time. So, yeah, a lot of people would say, you know, there's the Sony ponies and maybe they might label me as such. But I'm trying to build myself a gaming PC and I actually share my time between different consoles. I wouldn't say I have actually fell into any box when it comes to that. I've always preferred PlayStation mainly because I didn't like Bill Gates when he ran Microsoft. And I still don't like Microsoft now because it feels too corporate, where Sony feels a little bit more there for the player. Yeah, that's my feeling on it anyway. But I, I wouldn't say, yeah, I, I, I like every platform, um, but I like them for different reasons. The Xbox, I freaking, I didn't like the joypad at first, but I'll tell you what, this this Xbox controller, I'm loving it now. It just feels so nice in the hand. I used to prefer PlayStation pads, but this has grown on me. I freaking... It's great. It's awesome. And I, I like how sturdy it feels as well. It's just got a certain weight about it. It's probably because you pump it full of batteries still, which I really don't honestly understand. Anyway, we're going off on a side tangent. This is for No Man's Sky ideas, but I do feel your pain. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's have a look at the reply. Oh, it's you again. <laughs> you replied to your own freaking message. Oh, yeah, I've hit a like to it anyway. Okay, what does the bot do? Well, you can give it every item in the game, every multi-tool, every blueprint, every expedition, item, uber service, and even ghost and phantom system galaxies, give you custom pets, create custom ships, give you units. Nanites, Quicksilver can also repair things for you. Yeah, cool, yeah. Let's see, that's a better idea. I like this idea. I, I understand why you're getting a little upset up here. 100%. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, that could work. A services bot of some kind, that could be quite cool. Maybe they could utilise that new man spider that we've built to give some of this, you know, with some of the stuff that you bring back from raids. It could just be a loot cache of Quicksilver or Nanites, heck yeah. Or it could just repair everything for you with a, with a super duper repair kit from the past. Yeah, any of that, heck yes. All of the above, says Shadowhenge, but the ability to buy actual faction industries like shipyards. You can use your mineral resources bases to field refinery bases that feed and assembly towns that feed your shipyards. A lot more automation. Yeah, a lot more automation. A little bit like satisfactory. Something like that would be pretty darn cool, wouldn't it? If your settlement is happy, they have a higher chance of producing the S-tier parts that produce S-tier ships, fighters of any type. You follow research and manufacturing trees to enable more variety of parts and styles for all of them. I'm liking this. And the NPCs do too. So if you're in a high wealth system for your orbital freighter and dreadnought, the pirate production plant may end up eclipsing the economy. But superior fighters and uh, fighters and star destroyers coming from some random system could be the start of a new economy. That sounds freaking great. It does. And I would love it if when you actually choose where your settlement is going to be, it'd be nice if you could actually choose how you want it to be, whether you want it to be focused on dirt 
<laughs> that's what I get from mine. <laughs> yeah. Or whether you want it to focus on giving you AI valves or something, you know? Or whether you want it to try and find you shipwrecks and bring back ship parts or something every now and again. That could really work, couldn't it? If you actually had some sort of driving ability to say what your settlement will actually specialise in. Okay, Desert Stacker. A total rework of economy, starting with the removal of the unit cap, moving on owning to improving whole systems. I've seen people saying that they would like to own their own shop inside a No Man's Sky and put their own commodities in there, especially like pet eggs and things like that. Yeah, that, that could work quite nicely, especially now we can actually make our own ships and staffs, maybe sell the blueprints for your actual build. That could work too. Okay, Sam Selen. In the end, the only real end game that can be other people, I would suggest is PvP sectors, where players can fight and send their fleet to claim star bases to customise and defend, allow factions to form and combat each other, maybe a war between those that accept the Atlas or between the Travellers or the Atlantid. Yeah, that could work. Again, though, it, it's a difficult one. Maybe if you have set up a PV system, when another player goes to jump to it, it could say, warning, this system is a PV system. If you enter this system, PVP will be turned on. Are you sure you want to enter? Yes or no? Because we don't really want to be obliterating people just taking off in their radiant pillars and doing their first jump, do we? No. So there's, I, I agree, it could be a lovely idea. It could be a great idea. But it, it's just how do you control that? It's like, you know, with the 16 Galaxies idea that I mentioned earlier. Maybe if you put in, I don't know, the, the glyph with the, the box with a brick in it or something. The voxel or whatever people want to call it. Maybe if you put that in, maybe that's the system. That, maybe that's the one where there's a load of PvP turned on there. You know, so if you want that PvP experience, you can just jump to that system. Maybe that's the thing. But it has to be a later glyph inside the series of the Galaxies, I think, in progression. Cool, there we go. Perceived Velocity. I do not want a massive battle or conflict as end game. I want exploration. We build spaceships and freighters. I want them to use them. The only way that could work, in my honest opinion, is if each planet was unique. Well, as unique as they can be. Yeah, well, back at the E... Well, not E3, GDC 2015, I think it was, when they were doing the actual art and conceptualization of No Man's Sky, they actually said that each and every planet would be governed by a super sliders and would be super biomes. They didn't want to go down the biome route. They said players would notice patterns. They don't want people to land on a planet and go, oh, this is a radioactive planet. Oh, this is a swamp planet, and then take off. They wanted people to land on a planet and see its distance from the sun and say, OK, this one might be a bit more barren. It might be very hot. I'm going to land here anyway and see what's there. And you'd go there and you might find freaking volcanoes and things like that. That never actually come to fruition. We've got set biomes. I don't know why they changed direction because they sound so adamant that they were going to go down the super biome route. Don't know what happened there. We've never been given an explanation for it. But yeah, I would love to see that happen. I'd like to see that brought back in. Maybe if they do the reduced galaxy count, maybe the complexities and biomes was lost because they went so big on the way that they've rendered their universe. If they did manage to bring that back in, it's a little bit like uh, Light No Fire. You know, they've got one planet, but with the diversity and the variety of all of the planets that we get in No Man's Sky. Well, why not reduce our actual galaxy count to 16 and reduce the get planet count to that many planets, however many that is, from 16 trillion down to maybe 16 billion or something. 16 billion is still a lot of planets, but maybe they can make multi-biome planets then and do more with the variety, maybe bring back in the super biomes, maybe bring back in the super formula, and maybe we might get that variety that was sort of suggested and I would say promised back in GDC because it came out prior to launch. That's what I based my pre-orders on. That's the game I purchased, not what we got with biomes, set biomes. Illogical. Okay, here we go. Illogic. Okay, here we go. We've had a great space update. I think it'd be nice to start getting some planet side updates as well. Updated oceans and water, updates to companions and fauna. Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're hitting the same notes as me there. I bet you everything I own that none of this will ever be added, says Transcendent Taken. Well, we said that about ship customization, mate. We said that about ship customization. What would you just get? Ship customization. We said that about sandworms. What did we get the other year? Giant freaking worms, mate. Uh, we, we've said that about a lot of things. And then we get it. So I don't know. 
I would never say never when it comes to Hello Games. Although, sometimes it's like sandworms. We said we'd never get them. Sandworms like as shown in the demo. And then we did get sandworms, but they it's not quite the same thing. Sometimes it feels that Hello Games puts these things in as a mini tick box. Oh, the, the community, they want ship customization. Right, how can we get that in? Well, we could just give them the free base ship types, Captain um, Mr. Murray. Yeah, do that. Just give them the free base ship types. That'll please them. Tick that box, ship customization. Done! Whereas the ship customization that people would really like is to be able to maybe make Frankenstein-y ships that look very different to the ships that you can actually find in the wild. Or if you could actually get parts that are not available in the wild to make a new ship that looks completely different to anything you can find. Wouldn't that have been better? Just saying. Not that I'm downplaying what you've done with ship customization because it's lovely and fantastical. But it's probably not what people envisage in their heads. Okay, right, here we go. Sororities. Okay, well, this is quite a big one, isn't it? Okay. Yep, more proc of gen changes, maybe to gain, to the actual bases. It would be nice to see some procedurally generated bases, as well as maybe some better NPC sort of intelligence. I know that they've done a lot of work with Google DeepMind. Maybe we might see that in future with NPCs, but it would be nice to see some sort of you know, procedurally generated bases on planets. Heck yes. But yeah. Coolio, um, your big bunch of text up there, because it's in such a big block, I'm going to struggle to read that. I have dyslexia. I'm going to read the same line twice and all sorts of other stuff. So I'm just not going to go there on that one. Coolio, here we go. We've got um, username, Exton found or something like that. EXE, not found. <laughs> okay, Coolio. In my honest... In my honest opinion, planets with megafauna flora should be in the normal game and more crazier in the rarer systems. Or as you get closer to the centre of the galaxy, and speaking of getting to the centre, there should be more incentives for going to the centre. Yeah, well again, if you look back at that GDC video and the art direction of, of No Man's Sky, they actually said that the further away from the centre you are, the less interesting things you will find. It's more barren there. And as you get towards the centre of the systems, they get crazier, they get more interesting. That never actually came to fruition. It didn't happen. I don't know why. Again, no explanation on that. But travelling to the centre was going to get more and more interesting. The better planets you'll find, the more interesting creatures you'll find. Didn't come to fruition. Don't know why. Pookie, 8063. If they added raids, I really hope they make the rewards worthwhile. 100%. Hopefully what I suggested earlier with ancient ship parts and tech, maybe even ship sh uh, armor shaders, maybe even new armor sets. It's like we've got Null and Apollo and they've got these weird weaponized appendages. They've got body sets that we don't have. Artemis even has a setup that we don't have currently. They could add those sort of things in. I mean, these were the first travellers. These are the ancient travellers that have been there long before us. It'd be nice if we could find elements of that for customization to make ourselves like an ancient looking first traveller, you know, from the actual void. That'd be freaking great. Heck yeah, I'd be there all freaking day trying to find this stuff and unearth it, clean it up and find out what I've got. And I do like that element of random numbers game of getting a load of sludge taking it back to that man spider they clean it up and go boom look you've got a cape or boom you've got a new helmet oh look you've got a shader this one's got be jazzled jewels all over it you know that sort of thing that'd be cool but you know when we go to the ancient relic sites even in our normal area space sometimes we unearth like a treasure box that says that it's got all these be jazzled jewels on it and it's glittering in gold or whatever it'd be nice if you could even use that on your ship as a shader or on a multi-tool as a skin or on your armor set as a skin it'd be nice if you could find tron lines or something like a proper nexus suit of armor you know like how in the nexus you've got all these lights that go round it'd be nice to have an armor set that does that with the lights that go all over you almost like tron oh yeah and if you could add that to your ship sign me up take my money i guess i'd grind all day for that sort of stuff they could make this stuff and put it inside of the game um, but have they got the headcount? That's what I'm wondering. And especially now that they've got this other game, Light No Fire, could this all be delivered upon? I think if they put in the game mechanics for a void and raid system, as and when they add in new Quicksilver items, they can just keep putting in the odd new raid item. 
they don't even need to tell us what it is in the patch notes. So all of a sudden, you just go in there thinking that, you know, it's a certain loot pool. And you've got a whole new loot pool that just appears. That'd be lovely to put those in as little mini surprises. I mean, yeah, people would data mine them and find them inside the game files. But we've still got to go in there, grab a load of sludge, come back and try and get them unlocked. People will use save editors. I know what you're thinking. Coolio! Anyway, people inside the viewerverse, I think that's pretty much everything. That, that was all the comments there. I mean, that I only put that live yesterday around this sort of time. So there's a good chance that you can go there and there's going to be a load more other comments. Or if you've got ideas, add them to it, you know. I'm hoping that Hello Games look at my community tab or at least watch this video and then go over there and hunt for that community post. And then maybe look at the ideas and think, yeah, we can do that one. That one's possible. We'd, we'd, we'd do that one. Oh, that one's possible, but we might have to do it a bit different. Thank you, Lynn. Middle Seed, just subscribed. Salute Mondo. Getting quite a lot of new subscribers to the channel, people. We're slowly creeping towards that 40k subscribers. Salute Mondo, thank you very much for all your helping us get in there. And if you feel that you can share this on social media and get even more people over here to subscribe, that'd be lovely. Do so. Heck yes. Thanking you. Anyways, there's a load of great ideas there. This community is freaking fabulous. You've all got awesome brains. Heck yes, you have. Love all these ideas, and um, hopefully I'll do some more videos like this in the future. Probably do one after every update, maybe, perhaps, you know, just to see what people think. But anyway, until next time, people, salute to Mondo, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.